look, rivalries, anything can happen. Um, I don't think too many people are expecting anything to happen in this one, but hey, anything can happen. And uh, Gator starting with, with Michigan, as it stands right now, um, they just seem to be gaining momentum as the season goes on. J.J. McCarthy, his ability to make plays with his feet when plays break down, it's sometimes it's almost like he's better that way. He missed his first two passes and then went 15, 14 of 15 the rest of the way. And like the touchdown pass to Colston Loveland, they had a miscommunication up front. He bailed out of there and then put Indiana in a, you know, a box where they had to either come up and support the run or leave a guy open. They left the guy open. Yeah. The defender made a, Made his choice, and he paid for it dearly. Yep, the, a long the, touchdown on the sideline. The defense is dominating. I mean, we all know they haven't played the, the toughest schedule, but they're doing what they're supposed to do. And Jesse Minter, the defensive coordinator, I mean, that's one of the matchups against a quarterback that'll be making a second career start in Caton Hauser. I mean, that's it's a big ask of, of Hauser. But at Michigan State, I mean, he showed some promise from what I was able to gather. Like I said, I have some to DVR and watch that, and – Maybe there's something to build on uh, moving forward for Michigan State. And they do some good things and then find a way to not win a game. Um, So, anyway, your initial thoughts here? Well, I I think that, you know, I I expect Michigan will be clearly the better team on Saturday night. Um, We often try to find a a pathway for the underdog to come away victorious in this one. And I just, it's really hard to see in this game because Michigan has been so dominant, but Michigan hasn't played any real competition to this point. Michigan state has played one team that was really, is really good. And that's Washington. And they got hammered by Washington. Um, They came back the following week and made way too many mistakes against the Maryland team that made them pay for it in the first half. And despite the, you know, trying to come back in the second half, they couldn't do it because they kept shooting themselves in the foot whether it was turnovers or penalties or whatnot, they couldn't get it done. They go to Iowa, and they play a really good game against Iowa for a little bit, <laughs> and then they shoot themselves in the foot with more mistakes. It's self-inflicted wounds. Uh, and then the, the Rutgers debacle from Saturday. They were up 24-8 to eight going into the fourth quarter. They had an 18-point lead. That's better than a 17-point lead that I've seen them blow against Michigan on two different occasions. Uh, and against a much lesser opponent, but they couldn't get it done. They just they collapsed. They they're not strong enough mentally um, to I think be able to handle the rigors of this game against Michigan. At least the way that they played this year so far, they haven't been, which is unfortunate because had they been able to handle their business, they'd have two more wins and it would look a lot better as a four and two team with some confidence on a two game win streak going in to take on the Wolverines. But it's not the case. It's a couple of devastating losses on the road, and now they got to take on their their big rival, and they're going to be shorthanded, and they're going at it with a, a quarterback who's making his second career start. It, it just doesn't look good. I mean, it, I guess you can take – maybe you look at it, can they slow things down? If you – I mean, you can maybe stop the run against Michigan – They've been a little disappointed. I think the Wolverines have been running the football this year. And- yeah, they've only had two games over 200 yards rushing. It's a little hard to know what's real and what isn't because the starters come out and they yeah. could ro- roll up some totals, but that's not the primary goal. Um, no, but I mean, they ran for less than four yards a carry against against Indiana, uh, which and, and a lot of the, the reason that it was even that high of an average is because of big runs late uh, when Benjamin Hall coming in. But beyond that, but I'm not saying that's, going to be Michigan's Achilles heel. I'm trying to find some way for Michigan State to slow down Michigan. The problem is if you focus your attention on the run, J.J. McCarthy's going to carve you up because Michigan State's secondary is just not good enough. Worse than that is their inability to get to the quarterback. There is no pass rush from Michigan State at all unless they decide to blitz. And even then, they're not getting home anywhere near enough. So that's a problem. Offensively, can Michigan State run the football at all against the Wolverines. And there have been some drives this year, and it's like a handful of drives where teams have been able to run the ball against Michigan, but they can't sustain it for four quarters. Can Michigan State slow things down enough? Can they mount some some great opening drive like they did on Saturday? Can they get some kind of crazy six, seven, eight-minute drive where it's a 12-play 
grind it out, let the the play clock run down to single digits and and do that. I mean, that to me is is the the best path to to having any shot whatsoever along with playing the perfect game by not committing dumb dumb mistakes in terms of penalties and turnovers. Um and Michigan's defensive line is as I mean, I I there were some statements from Mike Elston, the D-line coach about he thinks this might be the best group that he's ever coached. Now, he hasn't been in Michigan forever. It's his second year. He was at Notre Dame, I think, for 12 years prior to that. I went, well, we'll have to see. And now I'm like, they might be. Their defensive tackle position it, with Mason Graham and and Jenkins and Grant and Rashawn Benny and Cam Good is absolutely loaded. And yeah, Jenkins gets a lot of the attention, and I think Graham might be the, the better of the two, but they're both very good, and you mentioned the backups they have. I mean, it's a rotation of guys, and – you know, when you're Michigan, you recruit, and this is what you can do. This is the whole reloading process you want to see is because they've lost a ton of players in the defensive line over the last several years, but here comes the next group of guys. Now, I don't know if this next group of guys has that one outstanding defensive lineman like the teams have in the past, but it's awfully good. But, again, the only thing looking at Michigan's uh, past is that they haven't beaten anybody yet. They haven't been tested, and I don't suspect they're going to be tested this week either or – uh, in two weeks, three weeks, when they play Purdue, it's gonna the That's first the test Penn is State gonna game. come at Penn yep. State. Yep. It's a big one.